Need stop. Need stop. Hi there, Scary Gary. Glad you guys came back. Man, this morning it was 40 degrees out there. So we're back to uh, dark hat, long sleeves. And I tell you, the one good thing about the COVID and having to wear the mask around, I've been wearing this buff type mask. And it might be good for when I drive my Dodge pickup truck, but also it acts kind of like a turtleneck around your neck. It just, you know, it just keeps pretty warm. Aww. Well, today we're going to do one more repair for my tire system, which we're specifically going to be talking about the tire monitoring system. Remember, we I had one, spent about 70 bucks on it and it didn't work for my blowout it showed me i had good air pressure so i did a little more research and i upped the game a little bit and i went to one that cost about 160 dollars but actually amazon's got it 20 dollars off right now uh, and the main difference with this one is that it has a relay so if you think about it, where my device sits on the dash of the truck, it's about probably a good 10 plus feet to the back of the truck. And then my end of my trailer is 35 feet back. You bring the, tr bring the wheels up, maybe eight feet or whatever. So, you know, it's nothing to say that I'm good 25 plus feet away from where the tire's at. Plus, I'm going down the road at 65 miles an hour now they strongly recommend if you're in a scenario like this you need to have a relay um, i just i tied it into my trailer lights and i know that means the only time it's going to be on is when my trailer lights on but my trailer lights are on virtually 100 percent of the time because that's how i power my observation camera in the back it was very simple, just tied it straight into the box that's right by the tongue. And then I was able to put the relay directly underneath the trailer at the very front part of the trailer, which about splits the difference between the monitor, the relay, and the tar monitors on the caps of the truck. Now, these were just a little bit different they still had the backup nut that was on there that you put the cap on top of and then put the back nut up into, which is kind of a little bit of a pain because every time I have to fill the tire up with air, I have to take that nut off. But what made these even a little more of a pain was they have like a dust cover that you slide over your valve stem to start out with. And then you put the nut on there and then you put the monitoring cap on there. And then you have to back this the nut back up to it to tighten it so it, it won't come loose or somebody can't steal it without the little wrench on there. But it's kind of hard to back those up. I found the best thing to do is take, pull it off, loosen it up, pull the cap, the, pull the monitor off totally, take the nut off and then pull the dust cover off. It makes it, because if you have that dust cover in a way, it seems like it's getting in the way of you trying to put your, your fill the tire up with air. So that has been one negative with this system. Now, the positive with this system is I absolutely see differences in tire pressure almost, I would say, immediately. I mean, I, I, I'm not back there going down the road checking my tire as it's going down there or whatever, but I, before, I'd be going along and I'd say, it's the same thing. Then the next thing you know, it might jump five PSI. So this one here, I'm telling you, it just moves up a point, moves up a point, maybe goes down a point. A lot depends on if the sun's shining on that side of the vehicle. You know, a lot depends on when you first get started, your tires will heat up. The other really good advantage with this system versus the last system, it also, it records the temperature of the tires. Which leads me to my next tar problem, which I think is contributed back to when I was driving my trailer too fast. When we went on the trip to Central Texas, I was this is our first trip of using this new tire monitoring system, so I'm watching it like a hawk, and I'm noticing one of my tires 
on my driver's side of my trailer, it was getting higher and higher and higher. And actually I pulled off the side, I let a little air out of it because it was really getting to the maximum pressure, which I, well, I assumed was the maximum pressure, but it, it, it could actually go up a little higher than that. But the thing that was going up also was the temperature of that tire. That temperature of that tire was a good five to seven degrees hotter than the other three tires. So when we got there, I went ahead and I took that tire off. And that's when I first utilized the LGI leveling system where I picked the whole side of the trailer up. I took the tire off and then I put the spare on there. And then when I got back to uh, Houston, I went and I went to Discount Tire and I bought a new tire. And I, this specific tire was, I actually bought it's cost approximately 10 to $15 more than the replacement tire, but it's supposedly a better tire. We're gonna see how this works out. They specifically told me, yeah, your tire is becoming delaminated and that's the problem, you know? So I mean, the guy that waited on me says, I've got trailers and I understand it. I do the same thing. You gotta be, you know, you really gotta watch it. Well, that makes three total tires I've replaced this year on Loretta 2.0, where the original Loretta, no tires. And I've only driven Loretta 2.0 a little over 5,000 miles so far. And letter 2.0, I mean, I was well over 18,000 miles. with. I really think the difference is I never drove Loretta over 65, where Loretta 2.0, I was driving it at the speed limit, which unfortunately at times was 75 miles an hour. And that's just a little too fast for these trader tires. So, one thing about tire problems, they're going to educate you on some tricks and some some better ways to handle situations with your tires. The first thing that I've learned is when you buy a trailer, you are not going to have a jack, a lug wrench, uh, you know, and we equate trailers to cars and you would think who would ever sell a car without a jack or a lug wrench you know i have never seen one without one except to use one somebody stole it out of but a trailer i honestly have never seen one that has one the first thing i bought was the anderson block which allowed me to get the trailer the wheel off the ground and i have used that one time and i didn't really like it because it's just a little bit if I was on the side of the road and vehicles were going by, I wouldn't like to be up on this little deal, have my tire on this little thing, and with the wind blowing, uh, I think it's just an accident ready to happen. The good part is I found out the best way to do it is use my LGI leveling system, and it works very, very well. I just put it in manual mode, raise it up. Now, those of us that have changed tires out, they always teach you the first thing you do is you loosen your, your lug nuts, break them loose to start out with, because once you get your tire in the air, you're never going to be able to break it loose because it's the tires, the wheel's just going to keep spinning on you. Here's the next thing that I bought, which keeps me from having to keep the tire on the ground, break the lug nuts loose, take it up, and then loosen them all the way off, take the tire off, put the new tire on, tighten them back up to hand, tight as you can get, and then lowering it down and then tighten them back up. And that is an impact wrench, which I got at Harbor Freight, caught it on sale, bought a, bought a three quarter inch uh, socket, and I basically can take the nut off. I mean, I can raise my tire all the way off the ground. I can take my lug nuts off, just like you've all seen the guys in the gas stations do. And this is one with a rechargeable battery. I thought maybe I'd only be able to use it one or two times and have to recharge my battery. I've only recharged my battery one time. And I keep, it's got the battery has a little button on the back of it that tells you what the level is. And I, it hasn't gone down yet. And I have basically changed out these tires and rotated them once. And that's the other thing that this would be good for. Instead of you having to take it someplace and rotate the tires out, you can do it yourself. So the next thing 
that I have found very useful for tire care to tire servicing is I have purchased a little compressor that fits in the back of my truck. I know there is compressors that you can have installed in there that cost quite a bit of money, but I went and got a uh, Harbor Freight $39 Black Friday special and I put it in the back of the truck. I can utilize it if I'm on the road. I have an inverter in my truck that I can plug the cord into. If I'm in a campground, I can just use the extension cord, go plug it in. It goes up to 100 PSI, which if you are on the side of the road trying to get air in a tire that requires 80 PSI, good luck. I mean, I've never, I've, you know, most gas stations don't have, or filling stations that have allow you to use air, they go up to maybe 50, 60 max. So you're kind of SOL. So having this, granted, it is kind of smaller. If you got a bigger one, it wouldn't take as long to fill the tires up, but still it's very, you know, for $39, it's very, very useful. The last thing I want to talk about tire maintenance is we are talking winter times here and things. And there we are talking at times you maybe not use your camper for a period of times. And one thing that is not a tire's friend besides the speed I drive it at is the sun. So if you can purchase a tire cover and they don't cost very much at all. They could be, they come in single units. They come where you can put one on each tire if you're a, if you happen to be a tandem axle. If you got three, you can put one on each of those tires. Or the ones that I have is ones that fit over a two-tire situation. And if I'm going to have my trailer setting definitely over a month, anytime it's setting that long, I cover my tires. I make sure to keep them from that, letting the sun beat on them. Um, and hopefully. This will aid in some longevity of, of tire use. Well, again, I sure hope this has been informative, and I sh sure hope to see you next week. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Turn on your post notifications. Click the comments down below. Subscribe, and you'll make me happy.